This rod right here is one of a kind, only one in the world, and I'm going to tell you how I did it. Let's get into it. is your boy the unofficial welcome back to the epi banger video and today guys and girls i figured i'd document some of the process steps of uh just kind of working on this rod so far by the way the autofocus is going to be whack all video i'm sorry ahead of time we are actually working on a prototype blank that i got sent from mud hole this is going to be part of their nano popping series the nano popping series is a rods that's really or kind of they started with a mindset focused in salt water where you have fast tips but moderate then once you hook up with fish but we are actually building on a blank they sent me because they thought it'd be awesome for bfs so and you guys know me my bfs stuff i love bfs i love doing bfs this rod i'm actually building to go and pair along with the new calcutta conquest bfs that's coming out in february i don't know when this video is gonna be out it's probably be out when i'm done with the rod and that's gonna take anywhere from a week to two weeks just to begin let me show you guys some of the details that we've been working on guys do not mind my dirty desk but we first have this nice carbon grip setup right here i love the carbon grip right now it looks phenomenal carbon grips are extremely light and they're extremely good guys this is actually the process for something i'm working on called a tiger wrap we went with a blue a dark blue a silver from fishhawk and a black thread this is a thread that i started with on this um tiger wrap we're going with the fuji sks seats um, i'm going to put in some fuji winding checks right here I actually got it measured out how far apart the seat's going to be there. We've also got the rod somewhat spined, but we didn't worry about too much about spining the rod. Because sometimes with spining rods, you can honestly find the wrong spine and that ends up being worse for the rod overall. But what we're going to be working on today is just doing some of this dart of a tiger wrap. And I'll guys, guys, I'll update you through the process and I'll show you more about parts that we'll be using. And uh, let's get to the next step. All right guys, uh, just to give you a little update. I am waiting for the first step of the Tiger Wrap to finish. So I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like right now. And I'm also gonna show you guys what it's supposed to end up looking similar to, but it depends on the colors and what kind of processes you take. So let's flip you around and show what it looks like. So this is the current state of the Tiger Wrap. It looks like this. You can kind of see already it's starting, but you can see the arrows I put on here. That depends on how I've burnished the threads. So I'm giving it this cool effect to kind of go with this sea trout ish theme is kind of what i've been shooting for because uh this is going to be like kind of like a specific sea trout rod sorry for the absolute mess in my fishing room guys it's just when you get so busy doing things you just you know don't worry about it let's get rid of that because we don't need any of that in here um carbon fiber grips are awesome i've never actually felt carbon fiber grips before and these are unfinished raw carbon fiber grips these are extremely light um why i chose to go with raw is just because uh, I wanted a more sensitive feel, I think. But just to show you guys what the finished tiger wrap is going to look like, because it's going to look similar to that. That's my swim bait rod I've built right there. So that little joker right there. So I finished it. I've done a tiger wrap inside the actual exposed reel seat. I've done my own custom cork grip on that. And I also have a Daiwa Z2020 on there to throw baits like this right here. So we're going to try to see what that tie wrap ends up looking like. I'm really excited because I love doing tie wraps. Tie wraps are one of the easiest things to do because it creates a really fancy look while still being easy. I also am going to have to think about what I want to do with this other blank I was going to be testing out and stuff. So the blank that I'm currently working on is the going to be the nano popping 841 model so that means it's 84 inches which is about seven feet uh it's rated for a 32nd to an eighth which to me that's crazy because it's very thick on the butt end so i'm not sure what the guys over at mud hole had in mind but i'm really excited to see what the what that's going to look like with this type of rod setup because typically a lot of your lighter rods for bfs are really really thin all the way out so a higher a thicker butt end but still a very thin tip so the tip is still very very thin so what i'm thinking is while yes it has a thick butt end i actually lined it up with rods like the huerco and the dobbin 701 it technically has a quick taper so by the third by you know the first third of the rod from the bottom it's already about as thin as most bfs rods so i'm really interested to see what this is going to turn out and what this is going to look like because i'm really interested because 
getting in the prototyping phases of blanks and stuff like that, I kind of get curious of what goes into those things. So we're going to get this move on. I will update you guys probably tomorrow when we actually go to do all the tiger wrapping processes and do the extra stuff behind it. So we're also waiting on a few extra parts, some Fuji widening chucks and stuff like that. But I'll update you guys as we get through different steps of the build. Just because I figured you guys would want to see this. I saw some comments on my YouTube video where they said they wanted to see more of the steps. So what we're doing in this video is that I'm going to keep it short for the talk through. And then we're going to do some fishing. Hopefully we're going to get one or two fish catches just to throw in this video. And uh, I'll see you guys um, probably tomorrow. I'll see you guys probably tomorrow. Alright guys, this is day two of the build. Um, we got it set up right now. We've actually, I actually did all the tiger wrapping and stuff. I actually have the epoxy curing over top of the tiger wrap currently. I know my camera's out of focus. I gotta get a different lens for this camera and do some better focusing. Uh, but I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like after you've done all the burnishing, the hair drying, and all that stuff. I'll switch the camera around to show you. All right, guys, that is what the tiger wrap looks like. Looks really cool. I actually kind of went a little bit more subtle on this one to where it's uh, kind of uh, got more of it's more about the colors of the tiger wrap more than anything. So it looks great. So what we'll be doing on the ends here and here is we'll be adding fade wraps. I'm thinking about doing a black to silver fade like the colors you guys see on there. I think it'll look great. So that is curing right now. We're gonna let this cure. I use um, Threadmaster is what I use. That stuff right there, or not, not Threadmaster, Gen 4 right there. And Gen 4 is awesome. Uh, it cures very flat, as you guys can tell. I got that very flat look to it. Uh, that also helps because I have the RBS G2. That helps a lot with getting your flatter finish is speed. Speed's a huge deal for a flatter finish. But yeah, we're gonna see how that turns out here in the next day or two. I'll update you guys then. We're also waiting on parts still. I'll update you guys then. Alright guys, so the rod is completely done. I know I kind of skipped over a few steps, but I was really excited to get the rod done. I really wanted to get it done before tomorrow because I think I'm going to go out and test it tomorrow and do a little bit of video and hopefully we can throw that in this video. I'll throw catch clips in after this point of the video so you guys can check out the fishing. See how the rod performs because remember guys, this is a prototype link from Mudhole. This is a part of their new nano popping series that's coming out. It's primarily a good heavy backbone rod with a very light tip. So super excited to see how this performs because this I think is going to be super ideal for BFS fishing and fishing styles. So I'm gonna run some B-roll, show you guys a little bit of fancy stuff with this rod. Alright, just to tell you guys a little more about the specs that I chose to go with this rod. As you guys saw, we had some fancy looking stuff on it, so I'm going to tell you guys more about it. So what we got is a decorative wrap on the inside with a tiger wrap with a fade wrap on the edges to give it kind of... What I tried to do was give it that sea trout look. So if you notice on the top part of a sea trout, they blend from a black to a silver. And I love that about a sea trout because it makes it look pretty. I'm not really a big sea trout guy. I don't like to eat sea trout, but I love to catch them. I love catching big ones. If you notice, I also faded the black into the carbon fiber grips. So carbon fiber, the advantages of this are one, it's extremely sensitive and two, it's extremely light. And if you notice, I went with a, sorry, I'm trying to adjust you. You guys notice I went with an SKS uh, Fuji Real Seat with the winding checks that go along with it. And also the dimple winding checks available from Mudhole. All this is stuff is available from Mudhole. So if you guys want to do me a favor, go check them out. Like literally, uh, I don't have any type of affiliation. There's no pro staff with Mudhole, nothing like that for me. So it's just me really loving the stuff I get from Mudhole. And uh, yeah, so I went with that with the Fuji. And I also went with my own custom sticker for my custom rod names that I do. I am actually calling my rods mullet sticks because, uh, you know, I love catching mullet. I, that's just what I love to catch. But I went and ended up with the, uh, the CRB LZR laser guides. Uh, these guides, I honestly thought they weren't going to be that great. 
I bought them because they looked light and I wanted this combo to be light and it's a whole ounce lighter than the Dobbins BFS rod which means it's two and a half ounces. That's a very light rod. But I ended up going the LZR guides and I ended up putting 11 plus the tip on the rod so 12 guides in total and honestly guys, my honest opinion of the LZRs is they're amazing. They're super light, they're super smooth. I haven't gotten to cast them yet, they're really tested out, but I did some static deflecting. Their uh, guide spacing chart's actually very close to what I ended up needing. I added one more guide just because I didn't really like exactly what it came up with, but that's okay. The LZR guides I've been a super, super, super fan of so far as I've tested them. I'm actually gonna plan on taking nice product pictures of this rod when I get the chance to, but I just wanna give you guys a rundown of the products I use. I use Garvin Fiber, CF, CFX Grips, everything's from Mudhole. If you guys wanna check out anything, I'll include some links down the stuff below, but the blank's not out yet. Uh, it's just testing blanks for BFS right now, and uh, you guys will get more of my opinion tomorrow when I go test it on the water. See you guys then. Be careful, it's six pound. There we go. I don't know what it is. Red. Yep. Yep. I don't know if I'll be able to get him up the dam with this light line. And this rod. Huh. Actually, I think this rod's hooked up actually. Yeah. Here, try and see if it's hooked up. Is it hooked up? Uh, I'll reel it in so you can stick it out. Oh. Whoop. It passes the flip test again. <laughs> Apparently the rat reds are in full full charge right now. All right guys, that wraps up the video. I hope you guys really enjoyed this quick little, kind of just taking you through this BFS build. I know it was a little more detailed than the last BFS build video. B build video, oh my lord, that messed that up. This video is more meant to really just kind of give you a little more details behind what goes into a build, what is a rod build comprised of, and what really difficult it can be. Because it can be difficult, can be easy, it's really up to you how you really want to set the rod up. I wanted this rod to be a little bit higher quality than most of my rods that I have available, and that's something you can only really do with custom rods. And I really wanted this to be one of those BFS rods that's really going to shatter it for me for everything else. And I based it off the Dobbins. I made it lighter than the Dobbins by a whole ounce. And I also kind of based it off of the Huerco Travel Rod 700 MG. I based it off those two rods, kind of getting an idea of what I wanted to use this for. I love the Ultralight Fish for sea trout, and this rod kind of pins it down to sensitivity, the using of hard baits, things like that. Hope you guys enjoyed the detailed step-by-step -step process of building a rod, or at least, I guess, a summary of it. I never really showed you the details because my office is a mess, but I've actually cleaned it up since this video, uh, since I when I filmed this video. I'm actually currently editing this video, and this is like literally like almost a month later because, dude, being married makes you busy. Uh, this isn't a month later, it's like three weeks later, but being married and stuff makes me a busy dude, so I apologize if I, uh, my uploads have been literally bone dry. I got married last month. Uh, I got married the 15th of January, so it was, it's just been, I needed a break. I needed a social break. I took a break from social media in a sense, posted some Instagram pictures here and there. We're getting back on the horse. We're getting back on the horse. So you guys, if you guys have been waiting, don't worry about it. I'm gonna do some more videos like this in the future. I'm actually be doing a lot more sitting down videos saying that I've cleaned up my background and actually make it look good. So what we're gonna do is gonna do more like your tips and tricks videos, what's in my tackle bag video. We're gonna do another one of those for sure uh, because it did well on my channel and I'm also gonna tell you guys about gear I really like to use and stuff like that. Hope you guys are glad and I wanna say thank you again to Mudhole for sending me that blank to actually test out and use for BFS. Works for inshore guys, so uh, I'm definitely telling you, 
BFS is the way to go if you're building blanks and fast action. There's a lot of great things that make this rod great for BFS specifically versus just ultra light, but you can kind of interchange those terms. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. If you guys haven't already, do me a favor, go hit my links down below. Uh, I have a lot of affiliate links down there that actually help me out and help my content journey for you guys. That is the weirdest way to phrase that. I don't know why I said that, but it helps me make more content for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I really can't wait to produce more content coming forward. Uh, hopefully we can produce some more stuff. We're gonna have a lot more BFS related content, a lot of my tips and tricks and how I got started in BFS and how you guys can catch up as well as I can. Thank you guys again. And as always, you guys need to remember, fish fear me.